All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna break down pretty much every single way there is to dry hop your beer on the homebrew scale so that you can create awesome things like this double dry hopped pale ale. Hey, if it's your first time here, I just wanna say welcome to you. Uh, typically on this channel, I'll do grain to glass videos, but I also do lots of other shorter, informative videos like this one, uh, where I do equipment reviews and techniques as well as educational content. So if you like that sort of thing, please go ahead, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. So the subject of today's video is dry hopping. That's a pretty common thing. A lot of recipes, especially obviously hoppy beers, will take advantage of this technique to infuse extra aroma and unique flavor characteristics into the beer. Now, depending on what stage of the process you're actually dry hopping in and for how long and in what quantities, uh, it really determines quite a bit about the final beer. And sometimes recipes even call for two or three separate dry hopping additions all throughout the process of fermentation. And that can cause some complications, especially for home brewers who are working on relatively basic equipment. I've been there before. I have fermented in everything from a plastic bucket to a spike CF5 conical fermenter. And really, no matter what fermentation setup you have, a lot of these techniques will still apply to you. Dry hopping kind of presents its own unique challenges in terms of both a sanitation risk as well as a risk of exposing the beer post-fermentation to oxygen, where it can actually have a bad effect on the beer's overall flavor. So more often than not, we really want to focus on keeping oxygen out of the fermenter when you're dry hopping. This is especially important when you have beers that are heavily dry hopped, like hazy IPAs, where you might have two or three dry hopping additions throughout the course of fermentation. If you're dry hopping very early in the process, especially during high Krausen, there's a lot less of a risk to oxidation as well as contamination, simply because fermentation is at its strongest at that point. This means that the CO2 that is produced by fermentation has positive pressure, is pushing nasties and oxygen out of the fermenter actively during this phase. But it's after this phase where as the Krausen falls and the fermentation basically settles down, uh, that you're most vulnerable to things like oxidation or infection. So there's a couple different methods of doing this. The first method is really the simplest and the original method, which is just taking the lid off, chucking your hops in, and putting the lid back on as fast as you can. You will not risk oxidation in your fermenter if you do this during the first stage of fermentation where you have high Krausen. However, if you do this after Krausen has fallen, you will risk oxidation. So it is often best practice to flush out your fermenter with CO2 and have CO2 in that headspace to keep the oxygen out as you are adding your dry hops. Uh, this is easier on some fermenters than it is on others, but in most cases you can just hook up a line to your CO2 tank directly, just turn your gas on, and then feed that into the fermenter and you should be good to go. Method number two is dry hopping in the keg. Dry hopping in the keg is a bit of a controversial one, but I'll get into that in a minute. Basically what you're going to do to dry hop in the keg is just put a bag of hops in the keg before you fill it with your beer. Now you can effectively do this right before a closed transfer to minimize the amount of oxygen. Um, and in most cases you're probably not going to take the bag of hops out until the keg is kicked. And therein lies the controversial part, um, which is as that beer sits on those hops for a longer period of time, you're gonna to start to develop some kind of not so great flavors over time, such as excessive amounts of grassiness and some hop burn, uh, which can be unpleasant. I used this method really only once. The first couple days in the keg, the beer tasted absolutely phenomenally. Uh, the dry hops had so much character that they added to the beer that it was it was just great. However, as time went on, that started to get weird. <laughs> Basically, the less pleasant, more grassy notes started to become more prominent, and I just, did not basically get rid of the beer fast enough to mitigate those issues. Now basically, you're only gonna wanna use this method if you're turning your beer over in like a week or two at tops. Um, if you're planning on letting that beer stay in the keg for longer than that, or you just can't get rid of it, you're probably going to have some issues uh, with flavor infusions that you don't necessarily want. However, it can be a beneficial thing if you're hosting a party and you're attending on getting rid of the beer fast, or if you just happen to be very, very popular with your beer and plan on turning it around very fast. Method number three is our first truly oxygen-free dry hopping method. It is also a very useful method for double and triple dry hopped beers where you're adding multiple hop additions throughout the process. And that is utilizing a magnet to drop a hop bag in at a later point in the process. Uh, this method will work very well in any sort of thin walled fermenter like a firmzilla of any kind or a bucket. I would not use it on a stainless steel fermenter though. Basically what you're gonna do here is as soon as you pitch your yeast, you're gonna get your dry hopping charge ready. You're gonna put it into a dry hopping bag and you're gonna put something stainless steel that's been sanitized inside of your dry hopping bag with your dry hops in it. Using one of these magnets on the outside of the fermenter, you're gonna to wanna to hold that dry hopping bag in place up above the wort. So 
As fermentation begins, CO2 will quickly flood that chamber and keep your hops fresh. They will not go bad over the couple hours that you're waiting for fermentation to start. And that way, when you're ready to actually dry hop, you never have to open your fermenter. All you have to do is pull the external magnet off and the dry hops will drop into the beer and then they will stay there until you need to take them out. Uh, these magnets are very cheap and very strong. I will provide an Amazon link in the description box for them. The next technique is specific to the Firmzilla with the collection jar underneath of it. For various reasons, I'm not a huge fan of the Firmzilla design. However, many people do swear by it. So this collection jar is very useful for dry hopping, especially oxygen free. If you happen to have this type of Firmzilla in order to oxygen free dry hop with it, all you need to do is keep the butterfly valve at the bottom of the fermenter closed as you add your wort into the fermenter and pitch your yeast. Then on the day of dry hopping, remove the collection jar underneath, add in your dry hopping charge, and reattach the collection jar. Make sure you have those two carbonation caps sealed on the end. Then purge that small collection jar with CO2 and pressurize it to about 5 psi higher than the rest of the fermenter is at. At this point, you can open up that butterfly valve and the pressure differential will cause the hops to be sucked up into the beer and into circulation. Uh, this is an entirely oxygen-free method that I've used before. If you like the Firmzilla, this might be the right thing for you. The last dry hopping method I'm going to go over here is for anybody who has a stainless steel fermenter, uh, especially one with tri-clamp type of attachments. And this is called a hop dropper. Now, there's an actual hop dropper product out there, but it's a lot more expensive than it needs to be, and basically you can just build the whole thing yourself for a lot cheaper, which is what I did. So. The concept in this one is a little bit more complicated, but it works out pretty well and it's repeatable. The first thing you'll need to do is attach a butterfly valve to whatever tri-clamp port is on top of your fermenter. You can have the butterfly valve open and place an airlock in it during regular fermentation. And whenever you want to add your dry hops, simply close the butterfly valve and take the airlock out. Next, you'll either attach a sight glass or some other tri-clamp compatible metal pipe uh, to the top of your butterfly valve. Add your dry hops into your sight glass or metal pipe or whatever, and then on top of that, add either a gas manifold or a tri-clamp accessory that has both a pressure relief valve and a keg gas post. At this point, you can add pressure to the whole thing via the gas post and relieve it via the pressure relief valve to purge out any oxygen in there and replace it with CO2. I really would not recommend pressurizing a sight glass with more than a few psi at a time uh, because you don't want it to explode in your face obviously because it's glass, so be careful with that. Once you're confident that your dry hopping charge is free of oxygen, go ahead and pressurize it one last time and then pop open that butterfly valve and they should drop right into the beer. If you have a one and a half inch setup like I do, it might need a little coaxing, uh, but you can get them to fall into the beer without too much effort. At that point, you can go ahead and take off your hop dropper and put a regular airlock on there, or you can just pressurize the fermenter again if you're pressure fermenting. I hope that was helpful. Hopefully you guys learned something. Please let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite dry hopping method is, what your preferred one is, and especially if there's one that I didn't cover here that you know about, please go put that in the comment section down below so that we can all see it and learn from it. If you learned something and you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. I'm doing my best to upload weekly right now on Friday mornings, but if you don't want to wait around that long, I do have an Instagram that is at the apartment brewer on Instagram, as well as a Patreon, which I'm going to link up here in the corner, and that has a lot of additional video content as well. In the description box down below I also have a list of all the other equipment that I use for brewing uh, to include the Glowhammer supply system. If you happen to be in the market for any equipment, uh, clicking through some of those links does help my channel out quite a bit. Thanks for watching everybody and I will catch you guys in the next one. So until then, cheers.